Welcome back to the Alpha Strike. And uh, today we're uh, attending Professor Irk's Clicks Academy of Higher Learning. I'm assistant teacher Mike. This is Professor Irks. That's me. And I hope you guys are ready for some learning today. Today we're going to go on about uh, the different size categories. Uh, Eric and I have been playing some games on the side, practicing for the WKO, and uh, we've figured out that uh, we're not entirely brushed up on size and found out it's kind of hard to keep track of uh, based on the different type of figures out there and all the different uh, figures that change size. But I'm going to deter to our professor, Professor Erks. Thank you. Well, yeah, Mike's right. According to our recent games, we've learned that size is weird. It really messes with your mind, and so we're going to try and help you guys learn this new size ruling that Whiskas has put out, which I really like. They did a really good job of kind of simplifying and making it really easy for new players, as well as veteran players who have played the game forever, take the size rule they know and make it simpler and easier to play with. So, Except for me. I still can't seem to keep track of it because it's just, I don't know, for some reason it's beyond me. I have this problem reading. <laughs> yeah, the reading. It's That's okay. why I have Professor Irks. He's going to help me out today. So we're going to start off with the little things, okay? First and first things first, the little people. Like Ant-Man here. He is, you know, as you can see, a standard character. But instead of being standard, he has this little tiny atom-looking symbol, which is stands for tiny. And according to the new rules, what that ability gives you is nothing but being tiny and plus one to your defense from range attacks. So for instance... If Ant-Man is on the map, being shot at by, say, a uh, war machine here, from a few squares away, I'll move giant man and these big old guys, I'll you can see it better. So, but war machine has targeting lasers, so he can see little tiny things real easy, right? No, not, not as good as you think. He can see through hindering, which is really helpful. But let's say, for instance, that Ant-Man was sitting on this object. Because, yeah, I'm just getting plus one bonuses because they count as hindering terrain for line of fire purposes. He goes, oh, I have a 18 defense from range, plus the object would be 19. That's really high for most clicks. But, you know, War Machine's an Avenger. He's got the advanced target lasers, thanks to T Tony Stark, of course. So, doesn't get the plus one bonus from the object, but he's still rocking the plus one being tiny. So, 11 on 18 is still a 7. Most average roll you can get, but it's helpful. So, what happens if I run up and base you with uh, War Machine or well, some other charge... Super strength, blurry tad character. As long as they're just gonna punch you, they don't have like the uh, sniper symbol, the sharpshooter symbol, mm -hmm. which will let them be able to shoot you at base contact if they want to, which he wouldn't want to. He wants to hit your 10 little 17 defense. But lucky for Ant Man, he's got combat reflexes, which gives him his 19 back close combat. Very common on those tiny figures. They know that uh, they have a weakness up close, so they'll give them something that'll help offset that because they get that bonus at range as, as well. Generally between, you know, either reflexes or super senses like the uh, Ant-Man Scott Lang one does. But, aside from that, we'll move on to the next thing. Oh, one more thing to clarify. Uh, Tiny Nuller grants you the carry ability, like in the olden rules. So, not anyone, like, the Tinies can't carry Tinies anymore. What? You mean Wasp can't carry Ant-Man into battle? No. Even though she actually might be able to because she has a flight. So oh. she can. She gets flight for her carry from a different source, in this case, being yes, flight. Yes, being flight. But if you had these two Ant-Mans, they could not carry each other. Well, you can't just, like, you know, piggyback, ant-back. You know, it, it'd it'd be funny for comic relief, but not really, no. <laughs> okay. So, moving right along. Um, let's see here. Let's go to normal-sized characters. So, standard characters have just the little burst damage symbol. symbol. Um, that just means they're standard. They are bigger than tinies, but smaller than... Giant and colossal figures. But Juggernaut is bigger than War Machine, but he's got the burst symbol. Shouldn't he be giant size? Yeah, Yo, you know, you would think so. But we all know, like, Juggernaut. He's a big dude, but he's not, like, the Hulk big. Even though this model is still bigger than that Hulk. I actually think Juggernaut is a little bit taller than Hulk. And bigger and meaner looking. This is confusing. <laughs> I'm confused. No, nah, don't let it confuse you. This is why we want to go over this. This is very important. Whenever you're playing a game of hero clicks, always look at your opponent's figures before, during the game. Just look at the dials, like just the, the, the combat symbols. Keep in mind what they are. It's very, very confusing 
to, like, look at a figure and say, oh, he's on a rooftop in the middle of it. Can I shoot up there? He's pretty, he's pretty giant, right? Oh, no, he's normal size. I, I can't shoot him. Dang it. But then, Juggernaut's <laughs> on the middle of the rooftop, and I can't see him. You can't see him. <laughs> Probably because he's bringing down the roof. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> most likely. But, you know, that's, that's just to be said. So watch your symbol. It's very important. One other thing to watch out for is tiny characters. Like I was saying, you know, Ant-Man, obviously, you see he's a tiny little figure. You think, oh, that's probably tiny, right? Most of the time, you'd be right. Well, I've got uh, one of my favorites here, Puck. He's nice and small. I say he's tiny-sized. You know, just because he's a little person doesn't make him tiny-sized. Oh, I think I made a, uh, a faux pas there. <laughs> but, I mean, seriously, Ant-Man, Puck. Put that up there. Not tiny size. Tiny size. Yep. Not tiny size. Tiny size. All right, hold on. I, I got a better one to show you guys. Hold on. So let's first and say you have these little cute little spider bots. They're just little pogs, right? Little tiny cute spider bots. With a specially designed smaller base. Yeah. So they actually look like, like a dial almost on your board. So they're like a little cardboard piece of paper. Pogs. Now, pogs. let's look at Clarion. Everyone knows Clarion, hopefully, now. This guy's amazing. Pops off this little guy called Teekle. A little cat. A little orange cat that just... Claws your face off. Teekle, approximately the same size as a spider bot. Now, you look at that cat and say, oh, he's tiny size, right? No. He's a big cat. Standard size. Standard size. As big as my, my cat. Huge. Now, <laughs> one thing why that matters. Let me give you an example. So, I have War Machine here. He would like to shoot at, oh, let's, let's, do, let's do Red Hulk, okay? Let's do Red Hulk. And Spider-Bot happens to be right there, okay? Since Spider-Bot's tiny, you can see right over him. He literally is shorter than the rest of them. But War Machine does ignore character bases for line of fire purposes. He should be in the way. The Spider-Bot should be blocking my line of fire. Kind of, but not really. Because he's smaller, you have to think tall, small. I, where are you? He's down on the floor. If it's Ant-Man, same thing. Ant-Man's right here. Even though his dial looks like he has a big form to little form, I still see over him. Well, what about Puck? He's short. <laughs> short on dial, not on the symbol. Mm. So right now, he's blocking a lot of fire to Red Hulk. It's like, move it, short stuff. I think I'm getting it now. You getting it now? Making a little more sense? Now, he's last... on the tiny size. These, uh, these bigger figures are still confusing me. We'll get to that in a little bit. Also, same thing that exists. Little Pog Tickle. It's right in front of those two. Now, if I were War Machine trying to shoot Red Hulk over my cat, I would clearly be able to see him. <laughs> in real life, yes. But we have to remember, this Tico gets he becomes like a tiger in, in, in the cartoon. Hero Clicks isn't real life? My whole world is just coming to an end. <laughs> Superhero world's way weird. All right. So hopefully that'll clear that up for you guys. Um, if I missed anything else there, let me know. One thing I forgot to mention as well, being tiny... If you want to break away from a tiny figure, you get a plus one to your breakaway rule as long as you're one size or larger. But if you're two size bigger, you auto break away. So Hulk here is giant size. If he's adjacent to, say, Wasp, say, I'm going to tie you up, Hulk. He's like, no, you're not. He just runs away. So if I have Ant-Man and I want to use him to tie up Red Hulk, when Red Hulk goes to break away, he gets plus one to his breakaway rolls because Ant-Man, this particular one, is tiny size. Correct. Oh, okay. Don't use tiny pieces for tie-up. It might not work so well. What if they have plasticity? No, what plastic figure has plasticity? Plasticity is really weird because, like it says, what it does is it gives you plus two to your breakaway roll from other figures, but other figures, opposing figures, get minus two to the breakaway roll. Mm. But since he's tiny size, they, they give him plus one breakaway, so it's only a minus one total. I don't think you have enough fingers. Last count. <laughs> so, for instance, if I'm adjacent to a plasticity of a tiny size, and I'm, okay, sorry, let's go with normal, normal figure, sorry, it's going to be um, a 4, 5, or 6 regularly. Okay. But since I'm giant, it's plus 1, so 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Okay. But if he has plasticity, take those numbers and take away two of them. You're back to a 5, 6. Hmm. It's basically a normal breakaway. Hmm. Okay. So it didn't change a whole lot. They just don't have the, it has to be a six breakaway like it used to be for any, even a tiny size figure. Does that make more sense? 
No, you confuse me with the numbers. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, so uh, when I'm adjacent to a tiny size figure, they I get uh, plus one my breakaway roll, but if I'm next to somebody that has plasticity, it... Uh, Decreases. It decreases my breakaway roll. So in the end, uh, I would get a minus one from my roll trying to break away from a tiny size character that has plasticity. Yes. Okay. You got that it. Makes sense. All right. So moving on, standard size character are easy. Those are the ones you'll most often see, and it'll, it'll come more into play when we explain the bigger characters because this is where it starts to get a little weird. Okay. So we'll use Hulk as our example. He's a giant size figure. What does yeah, giant so size? Bigger. What does giant size offer, you might ask? Well, they now have said that symbol grants you great size and giant reach, too. Do you know what great size means, Mike? It's really big. <laughs> Basically. So they get, a, they get a lot of really cool, cool abilities from that one ability by itself. So, for instance, great size characters can move over elevated, hindering terrain, and outdoor blocking as if it wasn't even there. Wait, so I just, like, step over everything? Like, yeah. Like it's a bug? <laughs> Speaking of bugs, you can even walk past figures. So if you weren't adjacent to them starting off, you can just go, I am Hulk, fear me, here I go. Well, okay, I'm going to come back to plasticity. Does that stop me? I believe it does, yes. So I don't actually ignore character bases? Because I thought you just told me I ignore character bases. You ignore character bases as long as you just are adjacent to them. Oh, so it's kind of like the flight thing where I can fly over them or around them unless something else like plasticity forces me to stop. Yes. But I have to break away normally if I begin adjacent to an uh, opposing character. That's correct. So plasticity will still stop you no matter what. But the world will not. I neither tall building nor large rock nor tiny brush that Batman is hiding in somehow to where I cannot see him will not stop me when my giant size mode. Unless you're inside. All these rules. What? I know. So, in Heroclix, a blocking terrain marker is about as high as the next nearest elevation, in a sense. Which is, I know, that's a lot. But when you're indoors, the blocking terrain and walls hit the ceiling. There is an indoor roof in the indoor maps, so therefore... Flyers and giant size characters cannot fly over them. Oh, okay. So make sure to take note of your map, whether you're indoors or outdoors. It will say in the corner, that corner over there on this particular map, uh, this is an outdoor map. So when I'm giant size, um, I go where I want to go. <laughs> That's right, bub. All right. So also, in accordance to movement, you also get some awesome improved targeting. This gives you the ability to target any figures regardless of adjacency. So let's say if I had a giant size figure that had range, um, I don't think I have one available to me. That's okay. We'll yeah. pretend that we gave a uh, green lantern sniper rifle to Elastigirl here. And then Juggernaut is going to come up and ask her out on a date because he's never seen a girl that is that large. And you see, she is much bigger than him. So generally, I think, okay, that must be a giant size figure, right? Yes. Generally, that has a symbol because it's that much bigger. The cool thing about her, though, she can pick her size. She goes, big and small, big and small, big and small. So she's got the sniper rifle and Juggernaut's basing her. And, uh, oh, God, I forget his name. <laughs> Leatherhead over here is, uh, you know, giving out some cat calls, too. And uh, she's kind of offended, so she wants to shoot him in the face. Well, okay, normally, for normal figures, they'd be based up to a character like Juggernaut and they couldn't shoot nowhere. They have to deal with him first, in some way, or break away, or something like that. She's like, I don't care about you, little peon, I'm going to shoot right over your head. <laughs> and because she's giant size, she can do that. If she wanted to shoot him, let's say he had combat reflexes, and had 19 defense, she's like, I don't want to deal with that, I'm going to shoot you instead. She can do that. So it's like sharpshooter and smaller characters are like tiny size. I can shoot over them, I can... Shoot out of base contact, and I can shoot them while in base contact. That yes. is awesome. The one thing you cannot do, maybe you have to look at check and make sure I have that right, is that, if, for instance, if you wanted to shoot over him, I don't think you can see past other character bases unless they're of a higher size. So, for instance, right here, since Hulk is bigger than Leatherback, you can shoot either or. Okay. But if it was Ant Man, no. You cannot see, I believe, Batman. No, you can. 
right? I don't know. Let me make Professor sure. Professor Herx. <laughs> so, okay, I yeah. I'm a student. He's the smaller teacher. Figures, I'm a student teacher. Smaller figures do not walk behind a fire, so no. So, if he's so smaller, she can see right to Ant-Man for me. Ah, all right. So, and I can see over the standard size characters to the tiny size character or normal size character behind them. So, I've got the high ground. I, exactly. Up above, looking down. But wait, doesn't that mean everybody else could see me too? Because usually, line of fire works goes both, both ways. ways. You're 100% right. That means if Ant-Man wanted to shoot back, if he got somehow got a range ability... We're just handing out we're sniper just rifles handing out all day. We're just rifles, because this, this is the best example we have right now. <laughs> but yeah, um, if, she, if uh, he wanted to shoot back, he could actually... Wasp would play a better example. She's got five range, so... One, two, three, four, five. Bam! They can see each other all day long. Even because though Juggernaut and Leatherback, uh, Leather Head. Oh, Leather Head. Oh. Leather Head is in the way. Wasp can still see Last Girl. Last Girl can still see Wasp. But Wasp cannot see Juggernaut. Well, oh, yeah, she's got uh, Leather, leather Butts. Leather Butts. Face in her. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so hopefully that makes more sense. That's just a thing to consider. When you are bigger than everybody else, you have line of fire over everybody else. The other thing besides that is you actually have access to more than that. You get to see through elevated terrain, outdoor blocking terrain, and a character outside of hindering through hindering. An example that would be, okay, so once again, Elastigirl being our giant example. Um, this Ant-Man has stealth, typically. If he's there, even though she's giant, it's still a hindered line of fire because he's occupying hindering terrain. However, if he decided, I don't want to be there because I don't ignore hindering terrain, which is what he does, that's a bad example, but say <laughs> he was there, she could draw the fire to him, it would be unhindered because she's giant. Because she's looking over the bush. Yes. Down at and I've got Donatello here. This is a uh, elevated terrain piece. Last girl could still see Donatello because she ignores the elevated for line of fire. So you treat it like it's not there, she'd have a clear line of fire all day. Even better than that, you're behind this rock up on the middle of elevated terrain. We're not on the edge. You just been the edge of, on the edge, edge of a elevated terrain to see down or up to. She's like, I see you. But again, I can see her right back. Yes. All right. So and that is giant size. The other thing they have is giant reach two. Now, Giant Reach 2, why is there a number attached to that? that that's a good question. So, they've, they've decided to make Giant Reach less of a, just, like, oh, you should know, it's either two or three squares. They wanted to add the number so you don't exactly so you don't get confused. I thought before Giant Reach was only ever two squares. I believe it was. They may have added three to this new one. I Like I said, I never thought Giant Figures my first time through, so I've been learning as I've gone. So, for instance, Elastigirl, again, being our wonderful little... Little example, or wonderful big, big example. example. <laughs> she has giant reach too because she has giant reach. So that means in there. she can punch any figures as if they were adjacent from two squares away. So that's close attack. Close attack. <laughs> Within two squares and line of fire. Line of fire. So she can see outdoors, she can see over everything. Anybody's within two squares, she can just reach out and touch somebody. And it is line of fire to the square, not the character. So if they have stealth, she can still punch you from two squares away. No hiding in the bush, Batman. Sorry. Yep. Now, um, with that, um, it's not the same backwards. A character with standard symbols cannot punch you from two squares <laughs> away. So, because they'll uh, air. So that means like poison. Don't have that reach. Poison, plasticity, doesn't affect you. So imagine... There is one big counter to hypersonic speed, and that's plasticity. So if you make your flash giant size, wow, you can hypersonic up, hit them from a square away while I still have plasticity and not be stuck. I think that's what they call a big sonic boom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Next, we move on to Colossals. Colossals, you won't see as a whole lot. They did just print a whole run of them in Superman Wonder Woman set. So we have a bunch of prep of new ones, plus the new Giant Man box set has one. This is not that one. Same sculpt, different paint job. This is the uh, con exclusive one, right? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Chaos Wars. Chaos Golden Wars Age one. retired, but uh, looks cool just the same. It does. So with a colossal figure, 
They have everything that giant size has. So they have great size, giant reach three. Wait, so giant reach three? I thought the giant size characters only had giant reach two. No, giant. Uh, the giant size have two. Colossals have three. Oh, that's so how you can tell the difference. Now three squares of being able to reach out and poke you in the eyeball. Yes, with my gigantic finger. In the finger eye. of death in, in the eye. Yes. Good, good job. <laughs> So, yeah, I get a gold star. <laughs> so, yeah, from here, Giant Man has, you know, let's say Puck's right here, Elastigirl's over here, Juggernaut's way up here, and this is Red Hulk over here. This is his area. This, this seems really bad for Giant Man, to be brutally honest. But what if uh, he were to do Quake? Does that mean that it's a close combat attack to everybody within those three squares? Yes, that's a very good example. Wow. That's so since a lot of quaking. Since Quake does the uh, kind of a AOE of adjacency squares, since he is colossal, has giant reach three, all squares in line of fire are considered adjacent for close attacks, such as Quake. He just quakes you and pushes you even further away. He wow. makes room. Got to find me some uh, colossal sized characters with some Quake and uh, drop some shaking, <laughs> shaking and bacon, shaking and bacon, huh? All right. So there's that, and then they also have one more ability that they only have, and that's Colossal Stamina. So Colossal Stamina is basically um, a way to keep on pushing. So generally a figure will have you know a standard combat symbol, and their defense power is just a little shield, and then if they don't have the little cross through it, they don't have willpower. Well, Colossals generally have just the Colossal symbol, of course, and they, they usually fixed. have... Usually have the indom symbol, which is the shield to cross through it. That means they get to go, go again, and if they want to, they can push another time. Oh, for a push crazy monster like me, that's amazing. I can just keep going every turn. And and if they do so, they have to take one unavoidable damage after actions oh. resolve. So it does take a cost, but imagine being able to attack three turns in a row with five damage. That's a lot of dead clicks. You could probably kill any figure you want with that kind of damage. Downsize to this, though, is that uh, I am giant size, so I can be seen from anywhere on an outdoor map. And, uh, you know, I think everybody's going to be gunning for me because I am and, a big deal. And that, kind of a big deal. And that's the thing, too. You're absolutely right. These can be seen by any other figure, basically of any, any size. As long as it falls a scale from tiny to big, the, the line of fire scale just goes in a little triangle. It works in both ways for everything. The only way to hide these guys in hindering terrain, if you ever want to get the bonus to hindering bonus, they can <laughs> get that. It's really difficult. But you have to get them in a, to a square that has you know either 4x4, four four, usually, for the Colossus these days. Uh, the Colossals. Colossals. Thank you. <laughs> I want a 4x4 four four Colossus someday. <laughs> a Colossal Colossus. Yes. That'd be awesome. So right now, in this example, we probably can't see the map too well. But there's only two here in diagonals. He could occupy both of those since, oh, I should say this, giant size and colossals can occupy multiple elevations. Oh. If they want to. No more uh, elevations getting my way where I'm going. They just kind of step however just they want. Stop in the middle there. It doesn't matter if I'm, you know, one here and ten here. I can just be like, yeah, whatever. No big deal. Because, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Doing my best Captain Morgan stance on the uh, Statue of Liberty. <laughs> So let's say you want to draw a line of fire to this giant man here. So we're going to use, once again, uh, War Machine because he's got the range. So let's say he's over here. And this is the uh, box he's in. And there's no hindering on this corner or the back corner on the left-hand side over here. Draw a line of fire from the middle. We're going to hit right in the middle of here, not passing through a hindering line. He is not hindered. He's not even plus one. But if you're able to place your objects this way where you can make a 4x4 four four with hindering frame markers... He's now in the drain. Plus ones. Oh, wait. War Machine has to see through hindering. No. No darn. help there. Oh, we'll use Red Hulk instead. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's got Star Tech range. is just too awesome. <laughs> we broke our example. So, yeah. Red Hulk thinking, wow, as big as I am, that's a really big dude. So, what if I gave the Bat Cow to Giant Man and now he has stealth? Are you telling me you can't see him if you can't see through hindering drain? As long as he's fully enveloped and no lot of fire can him that's not hindered, yes, he'll have stealth. That's a lot to hide. It is. In a bush. In a bush. <laughs> right next to Batman. Yeah. Who can't outwit you because he can't see you. <laughs> oh. 
So, uh, what, what about, uh, I've seen a lot lately, there's characters that can give different sizes or uh, items that do that, or even just powers that a character has that says, I choose how big I am. How does that work? It, does my hero click suddenly change size? Physically? Well, physically, no. They'll always be the same dialect. Like, you know, Let's Girl always look giant, Ant Man will always be tiny. So, keeping track of these size differences in your mind as a player is a very, very important thing because it can really mess with your mind when a figure of a certain size all of a sudden just changes on you. Like, I, I almost never look at Let's Girl on the board and think she'd ever go tiny. Ever. So, no. no. Come on. If she goes tiny and Puck is still normal size. That's that's wrong. Yeah. So it could be a really good tactic against your opponents to play size differences with them because they could lose track. Now, always be polite and remind them when this happens. But still, they'll think of it on their turn and they'll lose it. They'll be like, wait, you're tiny, aren't you? Pulse into range? Yeah. You're in hindering? Yeah. You're stealthy, aren't you? Yes. Or I'm giant sized, and you could actually see me anywhere on the board, but you chose not to because you thought I, I was normal size. size. Yeah, which I learned a lot. <laughs> when when you play against a figure like Super Doom, you forget that he's big, and he tries to hide, and you can't really hide all that well. <laughs> Anyways, but so Elastigirl has a power. Can I see your card? Do you have it over there somewhere? Or right here. here. So she can do this thing called protoplasmic physiology. At the beginning of your turn, you may choose tiny plasmic physiology. Yes, you can choose tiny, giant size, or colossal. If you do, she has a chosen symbol to choose again, so she automatically can use, or she can actually possess that symbol, and this is actually just a symbol on the card. So, can a character possess more than one symbol at a time? Uh, that can be tiny colossal. Wouldn't that just be? Normal size? No. You can never <laughs> have more than one different damage symbol at any given time. Um, aside from that, so, and with that, she has certain powers being certain sizes, which is kind of neat. Like, plus one to her stats if she's colossal, minus one to her stats if she's tiny, but she has plus one to, from range, and all that kind of stuff like that. Now, um, like I said, the, the one reason why you want to do this is because being tiny has benefits too. The plus one to the range, of course, and then being able to be carried by bigger figures. So let's say you had Hulk, okay? I'm pretty sure this one has Battle Fury, so he can't be carried ever. But if he didn't, <laughs> if he didn't... We pick such terrible figures for these examples. This is what we got on the fly. It's okay. <laughs> if he didn't have straight of Battle Fury, he could be carried if he was tiny-sized by any figure. Or even normal size if he had another giant size on the other team. We use Juggernaut. He's not Battle Fury at the moment. Ant-Man has a power that he can, uh, for free action, uh, an adjacent friendly, can be made tiny size, so or giant or size, giant size, whichever I choose. But the figure has to have the standard symbol first. Which Juggernaut does. Yes. So I could free action Ant-Man and make Juggernaut a tiny Juggernaut. I'm going to come wreck your house with my itty-bitty Juggernaut. <laughs> little Jugs. He's so much fun. Like a little ball of joy. <laughs> like a little ball of joy. Just... <laughs> Unstoppable ball of joy. That's what we all need in our life. A at little that point, unstoppable ball of joy. At that point, he's just a jawbreaker, right? <laughs> jawbreaker. <laughs> all right. Now, you may be asking yourself, um, why would you ever want to go big size? I mean, if everyone can see you, that's bad, right? Well, usually. But you already told me if I'm giant size, I ignore pretty much all, all terrain other than indoor blocking and... I can see everybody from everywhere, and I get giant reach two, which means I can punch from two squares away, extend, yep. effectively extending any charge that I may have or making my quake range bigger. And uh, I also get bonuses to my breakaway. Correct? Yeah, because your breakaway I'm rolls. bigger, so, you know, this for that, really. Also, like we, like we said with the whole targeting you get, War Machine at 200 points just sees through hindering terrain, which is good for breaking stealth busters. But what if they're hiding behind a building or hiding behind blocking terrain? Darn and that he, elevated terrain. And he just can't quite run any shot to get to a good spot because he only has the so missiles, much speed. They don't go up. They just go forward. They just go forward. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but, pulling in reality into a completely <laughs> fake game. <laughs> so when Ant-Man's inside him, he can go, you know what? You need a boost. Brrrp, make him giant size. Now he sees all things everywhere and can move over such things even though he flies already. But... 
It helps improve me from figures. It finds the same thing. Flying and giant size are very similar. <laughs> so when I'm big, I'm flying. Essentially, yeah. <laughs> so that is why that would be very, very handy. Now, you see, like, oh, okay. So if I could make someone who's, I don't know, normal size, who could oh, not see through anything at all, I can give them options with Ant-Man. But does that mean I have to play Ant-Man every single time I play the game? That seems like kind of a... A lot to what, figure. 50 points to 100 points. Uh, pretty good stuff. You can switch out for the other pins. But, you know, I really... I like to change up my teams every week. I don't want to have to run an Ant-Man every single week. Plus, I love the theme teams. I've got to love the theme teams. And, and what if what if my new teams. Uncanny X-Men figures I'll play with? Don't play with Ant-Man. Because he's not an X-Men. He's not cool. <laughs> he's tiny. Get him out of here. So, there's a couple different options you can do. They're like, you know, what would, what would you call... Uh, not that... Not, oh, tactics? In a sense, kind of. Yeah. Toys. Toys, tricks, neat things. So one of those things is actually the pin particles. This came out, I believe, in the Avengers set. Special object. Special object. Ultra light special object. Keep that in mind. When we do object rules, that might come back around. So this little hand trick has to be five squares out from any starting area. Obviously, you don't put it in front of yours. And at the beginning, you choose a symbol, either tiny or giant size. Beginning of the game, you Beginning must of choose. the game. It's very, very important. A single base character with the original damage symbol holding this object can have the chosen um, s chosen symbol you pick at the beginning of the game for the rest of the game, as long as they hold the object. Being tiny size or giant size. So, like we said, if you have a figure who'd rather be tiny to carry around, or a you know, figure who wants to just charge through everything or fly through everything and shoot you through anything, be giant size, that's a great option for, guess how many points on your team? Two points. Two of those. Two points. Doesn't break theme, doesn't hurt anything. So I'm going to make my juggernaut tiny into our amazing jawbreaker of joy, the job put him in my back pocket, and then go drop him in your backyard so you can wreck your house. Indeed. I just put all of that together. And you know what? He's actually a close <laughs> combat piece, too. So... He'll be shot at, but if he's tiny, that's a 19 defense, isn't it? 19 defense. In the hindering trades, they don't see through hindering, that's 20 defense. He's coming to get you. <laughs> that's all I have to say about that. Now, okay, let's say, well, what if I missed that set? I didn't get the cool pin particles. Uh, that's okay. There are other options, too. So, you can get these really cool things called ID cards. These ones are the Hank Pym and the Ant-Man ones. So, like I said... If you didn't want to play Ant-Man on your X-Men theme team, that's okay. For five points on your team, you can call in Ant-Man from your sideline to come in, give his inspiration, which actually gives your character an option to just be tiny, or you can give his free action to make him big or small. So you can kind of double up. So you I have can make extra tiny characters. Let's like for example, let's <laughs> once again we'll pick, a man can dream. We'll pick we'll pick Puck in these two. Let's say that Ant Man is adjacent to oh let's see if I can make this work a certain way like this okay so you can go obviously they both can pick tiny because the inspiration from Ant Man or you can go you can pick tiny by yourself. I'm gonna make Puck giant size. Not sure why I would. I probably pick Warmer to be be giant or anything else. <laughs> But as an example, you have that option to do that. Talk's awesome. Small thing, big thing. And It'd like, be more awesome. And, and like Mike was saying, 50 points. How many figures in this X-Men set are 50 points? A lot. A lot of them. So, I'm not using Jean Grey this turn. Let's go ahead and just call an Ant-Man. Make someone big or small. Imagine Cyclops. Really, really big. Just, <laughs> sh -sh 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 -sh. just vaporizing you from across the map over everything. Not fun. So, those are also options, guys. But A figure that we don't have that we kind of wanted to include in this showcase was the new movie Hawkeye. Yes. Uh, and a character sharing an Avenger keyword that is tiny. Uh, when Hawkeye makes a ranged combat attack and succeeds, he can place an adjacent tiny-sized character that he shares keyword with adjacent to his target. So, Ant-Man makes somebody tiny, Hawkeye shoots somebody, and suddenly that tiny person is now next to his target. Where did they come from? They were riding the arrow. They were riding the Spoiler arrow. alert. <laughs> That's supposed to happen before the spoiler, but, you yeah. know. You can put up a little thing if you want. <laughs> spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> They've all seen the trailers. <laughs> There's no spoilers. <laughs> all right. Well, 
that is covering our video for the giant um, giant size and puzzle size and tiny size and center size. The size rules in and estimation. There will be a test in every clicks game you play. The information you learned here may or may not apply. Yes. So like we said, guys, every game you play, look at the dials. Don't be fooled by the figures. Pay attention because if you don't, it could really mess with your game and you won't have a lot of fun. And if you're changing the size of your characters, keep track of it and be courteous. Remind your opponent when they're going to make their attack of what you have, whether they can see you or whether you've got a plus one in your defense because you're tiny. All right. And with that, we're going to let you guys go. If you have any other requests for rulings videos or ideas, stuff for us you want us to do, just let us know in the comments down below. We love your comments, guys. We read every single one of them, and we will reply to a lot of them if we have the time to do so. By the way, extra special call out to John Shepard. Thanks for watching and commenting on almost every video we have. Totally appreciate you. And honestly, we have no idea who you are. So thank you, John Shepard. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. Well, until next time, remember, strike first and strike hard.